This is Cameron Chai from Amazon.com and I'm speaking to Dion Zaridis from Spectro and he's going to tell us about their Genesis ICP spectrometer. The Spectro Genesis, the system you see to the right of me, was designed to fit a specific market niche. It's actually the best value with regards to ICP analysis on the market. It was designed to be a tool for oil, soil, environmental, and basic metallurgical applications. It's compact and covers the wavelength ranges from 175 to 700 nan nanometers. Um, the right side of the instrument has the optical system. This portion here is a sample delivery. The sample will be pumped into an introduction system and into the torch box area where it's excited by uh, a RF system at running at 27 megahertz. It uh, creates an emission spectrum which is then transferred into a spectrometer and we're able to do inorganic chemical analysis for the entire periodic table, virtually the entire periodic table. Um, all the, uh, all the uh, utilities for the system sit on the side here. There's a peristaltic pump, the main power button, uh, communications, gas line, and any water lines. There's only one power cord, which requires 220 volts at 30 amps. There's no utilities in the back, so the instrument can be pushed all the way to a wall. All service functions can be performed on the front and the side of the instrument. We walk over to the other side. I have a picture here of the actual optical system which sits in the, in the bay over here. The optic here is a half shell technology. You can see here, if I lift it up, there's actually two halves to the optical system. There's a bottom half where we, we position all our detectors and a top half where we position another bank of detectors. The reason we do this is to allow for complete wavelength coverage without any gaps in the main working range. So this system would cover from 175 to approximately 500 nanometers, and then we pick up uh, sodium, lithium underneath, and potassium on top. The reason they're piggybacked is to allow us to minimize any spectral gaps. So this system is basically, as I said earlier, continuous from 175 to 500 nanometers, and the detectors sit top to bottom, top to bottom, so that there's an overlap. If we take a look at the software now, you can see a typical spectra here. This is an oil application, where metals and oil. And from 175 down here, all the way up, we have a continuous spectrum. So if I bore down, we can get to single element concentrations. And you can see here 0, 10, and 20 ppm. If I wanted to see what that correlates to in terms of analytes and regressions. This method is set up for iron, lead, and arsenic. Of course, all these elements in the periodic table are fair game, but this particular one is only doing iron, lead, and arsenic. And we're using argon as a monitor line to check the stability of the system long term. So we jump down to regression, and what we see here is a lead calibration curve in oil, again, at, at the specific concentration limits of the standards, a blank, a mid-level standard, and a high-level standard. And over here, all our statistical calculations with the detection limit of six parts per billion in oil, which is quite good on a radial system. We go back to the spectral once again. We're able to see good resolution separation between the peaks and good signal response. We'll take a quick look at the optic one more time. We'll get a little bit more in depth to it. I, the optical system here, the half shell technology is very unique in that typically a system is built and put into a containment system that's either purged or under vacuum. This system, because of its half shell, is actually not only the spectrometer, but the optical chamber itself. We're able to purge it at a very low flow rate, half a liter per minute, and that allows us to get down to 175 nanometers efficiently. There's one holographic grading, and there's no additional optical components in the, in the path. So the low UV light, the wavelengths below 190 nanometers, are all done in first order, and they give you the best possible sensitivity because you have the least amount of light loss with this design. And that's, that's primarily how we put this system together and why um, we, we uh, target it 
at entry level customers who want to get away from the inefficiencies or the slow analysis of AA, but want the full flexibility of an ICP system. And what, what industries typically use these systems? The, the industries that this is targeted at would be agronomy, so soil and fertilizer testing, um, environmental testing, so wastewater, drinking waters, uh, soils for environmental um, uh, concerns such as a building site. If you were going into uh, do construction, you'd want to check the soil for contamination. Uh, metallurgical applications, if you're doing aluminum-based alloys, if you're doing iron-based, even titanium, this is a perfect instrument. And uh, petrochemical, any type of oil analysis, vegetable oils, feed oils, uh, fuel oils, they, they would all be done with this instrument. It's good as a quality control sort of instrument or more it of is, a... It is a production instrument. This is not our research instrument. We have a tip, another instrument for research which has an extended wavelength range, which has a uh, bigger optical system, covers down to 130 nanometers, but it also costs twice as much. So the value here is, is what's key. This is, this is truly a production type instrument. So it's got fairly high throughput then? Absolutely. It's, it's simultaneous, so everything you're able to do um, routinely is done all at once. So it doesn't matter if you're just doing iron and aluminum or basically you're scanning the entire periodic table, you're able to do it all at once in one single reading. All right, Dion, thanks for telling us about Thank your you spectrogenesis system. Appreciate it. Thank you.